Hey guys, gals, this is gonna be a real quick one. I just wanted to make you aware of a new option for your cover crops. Um, as you can see, my, uh, my daikon, my barley, and my purple top turnip did not survive. And it's okay, I mean, they're cover crop anyway, but they did not survive the great freeze of Texas. The barley, in a few places, I'm starting to see re-sprout. So it, it may come back. I don't really care. At this point, it's getting very close to one that would get killed anyway. It would have been nice if it would have lasted a couple more weeks, though, because I would have got uh, a grain harvest for the for the ducks, which was the original plan. But, you know, there's an old saying, you want to make God laugh? Tell him your plans. It was below freezing here for almost two weeks. And when I say that, I don't mean two weeks of going below freezing at night. I mean it stayed below freezing temperature for 13 consecutive days. That does not happen in our climate. It just doesn't. The other thing that happened is <clears throat> we had several days of single digit temperatures, including highs in the single digits. That also does not happen here. And I fully expected that every single piece of this cover crop would be dead. Don't get excited about that shard. That was almost killed by the freeze indoors in one of my aquaponic systems and I've translocated it out here. So that did not make it. There is some stuff, other stuff that I might as well show you while I'm going on here that made it. That sorrel did not, I assure you, did not grow that much in the last week. So it actually stayed alive above ground. And that's called perpetual, uh, perpetual spinach Swiss chard. It's just, it's Ford Hork Giant under a different name. But those survived. So that is a really hardy shard. You can see even here, like it knocked it back hard, but there's that one green leaf. So you know if there's a green leaf, there's a live root system. Same with that one, that's that same chart. But you see all this little green fleck through here? You see that? You know what that is, don't you? Come on guys, gals, you know what that is, it's peas. And that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. This is known as a winter pea. It was marketed to me anyway, is the most cold hardy, and boy, you know what, those little tendrils are delicious. Um, it was marketed to me is the most cold hardy pea that's ever been developed. And I thought, you know what? That's nice. About four inches of snow, temperatures in the single digits for sustained time, there's no way it's gonna survive. Well, as you can see, it did. I get these from Hancock Seed Company. It's called Blaze Winter Pea. And guys, gals, I'm a believer. It looked a little sad and I don't know if maybe it's just not having to compete with the barley and other cover crop now, but it seems like that freeze kicked it in the butt and it is taken off. We also have some other things popping up back here. I'm not sure what that is. I think that looks like lemon balm. No, I didn't plant no lemon balm here. Happy little volunteers, I guess. I'll check it later and see. But I just wanted y'all to know, <clears throat> especially in a little bit colder, oh, look at that. A daikon made it. <laughs> One out of thousands. Uh, I'll tell you what probably happened is there's probably a microclimate over there that kept it just a little bit warmer. Here's another little happy discovery. And uh, I feel like Bob Ross doing paintings in the 80s. Here's another little happy discovery. Um, fennel. So I've been experimenting with this. I planted a lot of uh, fennel last year. And I decided to just leave one and see what would happen. And I've, I've actually cut several bulbs out of it this winter because as you can see, it kind of divided and it started producing more bulbs from division. I didn't know you could do that with fennel. They're not as big yet anyway as, as the original ones. And I don't know how damaged they got from the frost, but look at the new growth. That is all new growth. That is in the last week, this, this new growth's coming on. And fennel's another little delicious treat, right? But it survived. I had no idea that fennel was this cold hardy to, to survive single digit temperatures. And if I had, I really think if I had gotten just a big handfuls of straw and just mulched this, it might not have even got knocked back at all. You can see right here, this is the, the mother plant that was never harvested except leaves were taken off of it. And it divided, there's four in here now and I took one here and I took one here and it looks like the one that I took is even trying to come back right there. 
So I'm just going to let this go on perpetually and see what happens. I'll be planting fresh fennel this year. I don't know if um, this is a really great strategy because they're certainly smaller and I would have gotten a really big yield if I took the original bulb. But maybe letting a few go because then you've got this fresh, beautiful frond that you can use all through your uh, all through your winter. Uh, I think in climate zone seven, maybe even zone six. I mean, frankly, this this freeze we got, there's some barley here and there that still made it. But this freeze we got, effectively, we were zone six. I mean, this was a. Well, I grew up in Pennsylvania in the 70s and 80s, and it was a hell of a lot colder back then than it's been in recent years. And I'll tell you what, multiple days in the single digits happened, but it wasn't real, real common. This was effectively West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Ohio weather for about two weeks we had. So anything that survived it, you know, should be something you guys further north should be able to use. Because a lot of times y'all get on me and like, you know, I can't grow that where I'm at. It freezes here. Oh, it freezes here too. And they're like, and I know what y'all are like. You're like, not the way it does here. And you're right. Here's another little happy accident. Not really, this was planned. See these? These are beans I grew last year. I left for a seed crop. And do you see where they still are? They're hanging up here on this vine. They're dry and wet, dry and wet. Now, ain't no way to save your seed, is it? It actually is. And what we'll do, and probably next week, I think we'll be in the clear to do it. I'll just take these seeds from right here where they've sat all winter long, just put them right back in the dirt where they grew. We'll see how that works out. I did take some, you know, the conventional way. But anyway, that, that wraps up this morning's little video for y'all. But there it is again, Blaze Winter Pea. I was blown away. And I'll tell you something else. This is a human crop. The peas aren't that great. But what's delicious, like I said, the little tendrils. But in your salads, just that. And I've been thinking more and more since I interviewed Jeff Lawton again last week. He was talking about the 20 leaf rule. I've never heard of this before. But there's some nutritionists that suggest that as humans, if we really want to diversify our diets and our nutrition profile, we should consume at least 20 different leaves a day. That's not a giant bowl of them. Like maybe that's a couple of those thrown in your salad. That intrigues me. I'm going to see what I can do to come up with a 20 leaf garden. I'll catch up with you guys later.